Floss Tube. My name is Sarah. I'm from Memphis and this is my channel about cross stitch. Welcome, welcome. Today I'm going to be doing basically, I guess it's my 2023 whip parade. It's 2024. I really wanted to film this before the end of the year, but you know, it is what it is. So um, this will be my whips from 2023 and what I'm taking into 2024 with me. So just a little bit about me in case this is the first time you've made it to my channel. If you're new, welcome. And if you're not new, I'm so happy to be spending some more time with y'all again. Thank you for coming back. Um, like I said, my name is Sarah. I'm from Memphis. I um, am married to my high school sweetheart. I'm a mom of two, a Mimi of one, plus one on the way. Uh, Mother-in-law, I have uh, two dogs and a cat. Uh, I live in Memphis. I am an MRI tech and I've been cross-stitching since the summer of 2020. I love it. I love this community. I've had the best time. I've made so many friends. I've met so many amazing people. I've been to amazing retreats and I just cannot stop <laughs> starting all of the cross-stitch things. I did much better last year, um, but you know, there's always room for improvement. So my thing is, I don't really mind how many whips I have. Um, the more the merrier. I love them. I wish I could start everything that I have, but I have a predefined space. I would like my whips to fit in. These four cubbies above my head back here, they don't fit right now. Um, so that was my goal last year. One of my goals was to kind of whittle down so I could get into these cubbies um, and the same goal for this year. Uh, last year, my goal was to complete 40 old whips. I did not complete 40 old whips last year. I kind of went out on that goal with my friend, Julie, Kansas City Girl in the Colorado World. She did amazing. I did not do too shabby. Um, the year before that, I had started 62 things, so I reined that in dramatically this past year but I'm still kind of almost treading water. So let's just get going with some of my stats, my stats for 2023. All right, so let's see. I have 10 UFOs. UFOs are unfinished objects. I feel a lot of different ways about my 10 UFOs. Some of them I basically just do not know that I'm not gonna work on for several years, but I think I'm going to work on them sometime in the future. So I don't wanna just keep showing them in my, or keeping them in my active whip parades and things like that, because they're, it's really not relevant right now that, I mean, like it's going to be years before I get to them. So, um, some of them are like that. Some of them I've, uh, let some people have adopted. Um, some of them, I am not sure what's going to happen with them yet. So I'm keeping them kitted together and just kind of just put it into the side to think about a little bit more. Um, and then some of them I know I'm just done with. And so I'm de-kitting those. So sorry, of course my eyes itching because it's on floss tube, right? Um, so that's kind of where my 10 UFOs stand. So let's see, I had in 2023, I had 45 new starts. I finished 41 whips. Out of those 41 whips that I finished, 19 of them were old whips and 22 of them were new whips. So kind of down the middle. I actually did end up starting more things than I finished, which I thought I did a little bit better than that, but uh, oh well, it is what it is. Um, so basically I am starting 2024 with 93 whips. That's just a handful less than what I started with last year. Um, and so obviously I've been stitching and I have been finishing and I've been FFOing and all the things, but I've done a lot of starting as well. Um, so when I wrote about, when I figured out those stats today and wrote those numbers down, I'm like, Sarah, you do not need to start anything in 2024. <laughs> That's not realistic for me though, but I'm going to try really, really hard to get a lot of these finished. I have some major focus pieces, which if you go back and watch my last video of my 2024 plans, um, I have some big focus pieces. I'm also doing a walk of shame uh, whip go board. And on that whip go board is the remaining whips from last year that I did not stitch on at all. Some of those whips that I did not stitch on at all last year, I've UFO'd, but the remainder of them, 25 of them, make up a whip go board. Um, so as I go along the way, I'll show you, hey, this one's on my whip go board for my walk of shame. My walk of shame whip go. Um, 
But the other thing I'm going to be doing is I have all of my whips organized alphabetically. Uh, I did that for a multitude of reasons, but mostly because it helps me keep up with my album and my progress pictures um, for the year that I'm doing for my um, Whip Warriors album. Whip Warriors is a group on Facebook. And basically what I'm going to do is if I finish something, I can start something loosely. That's, that's, that's the game plan. But I don't want to start in a place of everything I finished. That's really not the goal for me this year. Um, but so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my whip. I'm gonna do my best to remember all of the things about it, the, um, you know, designer and who I started it with and the stitch alongs that it might be connected to and my fabric and floss and all the things. If I can't remember something, more than likely, I'll just put it down here. Um, I also am pretty good about keeping my description box full of any links that I promise or people that I talk about or things like that. Um, the other thing I'm going to do, which I'm excited to do, is if I did work on my whip this year and I'm showing you progress in person, I'm also going to be popping up a picture of what it looked like when I started the year last year. So you'll be able to see, and when I go back and look, I'll be able to see how much progress I made in the year. So, all right, are we ready? Um, if you have any questions about any of the whips, anything at all, feel free to leave me a comment. Um, I do check my comments fairly regularly, so feel free to leave me a comment, or you can come on over to my Instagram account. My Instagram account, I'll put it right up here, uh, is Memphis Sarah E. I r update my Instagram very regularly, and I'm on there quite frequently. So if you didn't hear back from me in my comments or didn't wanna leave a comment publicly like that, um, feel free to message me on Instagram because I'm on there a good bit. All right, so <sighs> here we go. Let's get settled in, let's get settled in. So I've, I've been working on organizing this all day. I've procrastinated making this video for at least two weeks. Um, but I've, it's taken me all day to organize this between deciding, you know, what order I was going to do these in and getting them set in order and getting pictures of my things and all it's, it's, so it's been a process. So I'm excited to get going. Let me grab a quick drink. I probably will pause here. So yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, the other thing is, is that I have them all stacked like this. I'm going to go to the side. So I will be chopping my video in certain parts when I'm having to turn around and pull all these whips down. All right. So I won't make y'all hang around for that. I have done a decent job. I think everything, I don't think I should be dealing with any zippers or weird crinkles or anything like that. So you should be fairly safe if you're wearing headphones. Let's get going. And, and, and feel free to count along if you like. I'm not going to keep count right now because, I mean, like I said, 93. And I think that should be fairly accurate. But I'm not going to count along the way because I will, I'll get lost and then I'll be, I'll be totally off. So, all right. <clears throat> Whip number one, Antique Celtic Sampler by this is Elizabeth's Needlework Designs. I love this one. I started this one just fairly recently as kind of just a nod to the most recent release of the Rebecca Yaros um, Dragon series. Uh, she wrote a book called Fourth Wing that Julie, Kansas City Girl in the Colorado World, turned me on to this year. I loved it. It was amazing. And her second book, Iron Flame, came out in November. So I thought it was an appropriate time for a start. I love this one so much. I've had this chart for a really long time. But here we are on what started. It is going along so well. It is much smaller than I thought it was going to be. For some reason, I thought this thing was going to be huge. But I'm stitching it with the called for fancy floss, which as you can see is a very, very pretty. I'm stitching it on a piece of 32 count um, old lawn by Manny Didana. I love this fabric. It is like an old lawn, but it does have some really pretty, it's hard to see. It's got some little pinky tones in it too. Um, I love this whip. I would like to finish this one this year. It is a really fun stitch. It lives in this a beautiful project bag. If you haven't met me before, I have a real thing with project bags. I love them so much. So I'm going to be showing you a lot of the times what my uh, whips are living in. This one is a beauty made for me, especially by my sister-in-law. My sister-in-law, you can find her Etsy store, River Town Designs US. She has a wide variety of bags. Um, some, you know, full fabric, some vinyl. Anyway, don't you love this panel? 
gorgeous. Picked it up at a quilt shop this past summer. There's a great quilt shop just outside of Memphis called So Squared up in, um, gosh, I think it might be in Mumford, Tennessee or Atoka. I can't remember. The towns, there's some little towns right up in there, but isn't that so cool? I love that. So that one, I was very excited to start that one this year. All right, my next one. This is going to be a member of my Walk of Shame Whipco board. This chart is called Around the World by RETM. Um, it's one of her Quaker fantasy series. I love it. She signed it for me at market a couple years ago. I started this with my dear friend Leanne, Leanne Stitches. Leanne Stitches is also um, the the creative genius behind the company Forbidden Fiber Co. They sell, um, she hand dyes linen, floss, uh, creates cross stitch patterns, and originally began as a hand, beautiful hand dyed yarn, and she, she still does that too. So um, while we were at market, grabbed this one, and then Liam and I sat up one night and we converted um, this chart, which was a DMC chart, we went through and we created all to the Forbidden Fiber Coat, and then we started this together. So I started this on a piece of fabrics by Stephanie, which is one of my favorite fabric dyers. Um, it's called, it's 40 count snowdrift. You'll see my little tiny start. Yep. And there was no progress on that last year, so I'm not going to be popping a picture up, but um, I, I, I love I love stitching Quakers. I have finished an RATM Quaker called the Nutcracker. It's really gorgeous. Uh, it's one of my favorite stitches I've ever done, actually. This are my beautiful, this is our, oh, sorry, loud outside. This is my beautiful, um, our beautiful Forbidden Fiber Co. conversion that we did. It looks like a raggedy mess, doesn't it? Raggedy mess full of beautiful colors. But yeah, so this one will be on my whip go this year. So I will definitely be putting some time into it. Um, the way my whip go is going to work is I'm going to give each piece two Saturdays a month. So I should see some good progress on that. All right, my next one. This is a super fun one. This was a new start for this year. It is the Autumn Bee by the Blue Flower. What's so cool about this is I loved this chart. And I had it, and then I went to Galleria, and while I was at Galleria up in St. Charles, Missouri, I went with my friends, um, Carrie and Whitney from the Three Trail Stitchers. We went over to the Color and Cotton store, and I got to meet um, Angela of Color and Cotton, and I did a, well, Angela and I worked together, and we did a conversion um, to from this, which was um, like a Wichelt linen, and a lot of, oh gosh, looks like it was dinky dyes. Okay, and so what I did was I went and picked out this beautiful fabric. This is Lilac by um, Color and Cotton. It is a 32 count linen. And then Angela helped me just, I pulled the DMC cause she was helping other customers. And then we sat there together and we went through and we converted all of the DMC, except maybe one or two, to um, beautiful, beautiful Color and Cotton floss. Um, it was, it was fun. It was, we had to make a lot of decisions because, um, it was charted in dinky dyes and there was some variegated stuff and stuff that the DMC just stuff that was kind of too close. And anyway, so it got a little bit complicated. So, so nicely, Angela goes over there when we're done pulling all the floss and types me up a, a conversion on her computer. So I will have it forever. <laughs> She's fabulous fabulous to um, work with them and, and visit and um, I had a great time. Uh, I also was able to pick up at Galleria the called for a little finishing chenille by Lady Dot Creates. It's called Berry Crush. So once I do finish stitching it, isn't that just a fabulous color combination? Also, it lives in this beautiful project bag gifted to me by my friend Zan, the Crazy Band Lady Stitches, by Buckleberry Quilts. I love this. This is perfect. I adore these um, mushrooms down here, toadstools. It lives in there, and I, I very fittingly started it while we were at a Stitch New England retreat while I was there with Zan. And I didn't get a lot done because I was really felt drawn to work on some of the other things that I brought with me, but I'm excited to get some more stitches in on that this year. All right, what is next? This is an oldie, like like a really oldie for me. And I think my pattern just slipped off. Um, this is Autumn Dreams. 
Autumn Dream by Cottage Garden Samplings. This is uh, one of my hashtag Stitch Asia pieces. This is designed by Vinnie P.S. Tan and Vinnie P.S. Tan is from Malaysia. I have not worked a whole lot on this. That's pretty much where I am. I'm stitching this on the called for linen with the called for fancy floss. The thing with this is, is it is a 36 count. And just up until this past year, I was not friends with 36 count. Um, it was my least favorite count of fabric. I didn't love stitching with one strand of floss, but over the past year, I've gotten much more comfortable stitching with 36 count or 40 count. And I've decided that I've even, if, if it's more, economical for me to choose a 36 or 40 because it's stitched in maybe like a silk or a you know an over dyed then I am leaning towards that size now of, of linen even though 32 count is my favorite just because on your 36 or 40 that usually on your 36 you can go with one strand of floss whereas you know definitely on the 40 um but I do still prefer the 32 count but I've made friends with 36 and 40 so um, if I'm also looking to maybe make a piece smaller than it would be with the 32, um, then I will, I'll choose that. So I have hope that I will work on that some. This one, I love this. I plan to finish this one by, uh, I mean, next November. That's the game plan. This is Autumn Strolls by Lindy Stitches. I love Lindy Stitches. She's one of my fave designers. I think this is adorable. I love how the borders are all different and they don't exactly meet. I love the turkey. It's just wonderful. Um, I made a decent progress on this. Oh gosh, that last one. Sorry, I probably, um, now that I'm thinking back about it, <laughs> I will have had a piece up there to show the difference of any little bit of progress that I made last year. So let me go on and pop a picture up here of my progress from last, where I was when the year started last year. And this is where I am now. I finished some more words and the pheasant. The goal was to finish the pheasant. So I'm stitching this on a piece of 36 count Nantucket Eve by Seraphim Fabrics. I love Seraphim Fabrics. I'm using all of the called for floss. So there is some DMC mixed with fancy floss. I think this is so fabulous. I changed the initials to um, match my initials and I love this piece. And this is one that I do hope to finish by November of next year or during November next year. My next one, I started with my friend Alexis, Alexis My Amazing World. We started it a couple years ago. It's called Away We Ride by Blackbird Designs. I love this. I, I really like all those crazy windows in that house. I think that's fabulous. So I started this on a piece of, this is, um, I think it's 32 count prim green by R&R. &R. Um, you know, I'll pop a picture up here of where I was and what I've done this year. Haven't done a ton. Um, this border is kind of slow going for me. One of the reasons why is when I started this, there was um, a fancy floss that it calls for called Garden Gate. And I couldn't find that stuff anywhere. Like I searched and searched. So what I did was I made a blend up of two Forbidden Fiber Co. flosses and used some of the garden gate that I had. So what I'm having to do when I go back and work on this is remember like where I was using my blend and where I was using the garden gate. And um, once I get the border finished and I get inside the piece, it still calls for a lot of garden gate. I'm just going to use straight garden gate then and no more blend. But yeah, it's really pretty. There is a sister piece to Away We Ride. I think it's like called a Cox Crow. And I should have enough of the same linen to do that sister piece on. Well, that's the game plan anyway. This one lives in a super, I love this bag. This is by my friend Lolly of Lollipop Stitches. Look at this. It's so pretty, but so spooky and creepy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is an older whip as well. And I just worked on this one this past Friday for hashtag Owl Forest Fridays. That is hosted by um, Ali Z. Ali Z is crafty and Sarah Stitchy Reads. Stitchy Sarah Reads. Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> um, this would be Bayou Cat by Owl Forest Embroidery. I bought this several years ago and it was a full kit. I am stitching this. I'll pop my progress picture up here, but I'm stitching this on the kit linen. It's like a 32 count. It's just kind of like a neutral with some modeling. I am using the Owl Forest um, floss, which is very variegated. Um, for example, like all of this, that's all one color floss. So it's really variegated and 
it's looking good. I would like to finish this one this year as well. I'm hoping that my little progress every Owl Forest Friday will get me there. This past Friday, I worked on this area right up there in that, tri in that triangle on top. Yes, very handsome. Okay, I started this one as a Christmas present. This is um, a Christmas present that I need to get done. <laughs> It's an ornament for my daughter and my son-in-law called Best Friend Santa. It's in memory of um, their sweet uh, dog, Remy, who passed away this um, just a couple months ago. And I just had the littlest start done on this. But, you know, I'm going to knock this one out and get this one FFO'd for them. And they'll have it for next Christmas. <laughs> I got a little bit behind on ornaments and such this year, but... Um, they wouldn't mind because they were going to open it on Christmas anyway. So yeah, they'll have it for a little early. I do have my um, Mill Hill chart. This is perforated paper. I do have it put on a little um, set of mini stretcher bars that you could use like when you do needlepoint. Um, you don't have to do this. I just, I'm really rough on this perforated paper. I hold it really tight and I tend to bend it. And um, also my floss seems to catch on the little stuff on the edge a lot so I just stuck it on one of these you don't have to do this I mean my friend Fawn even suggested like if this stuff on the edge is bothering you when you're taking um uh, your floss if it's catching that you could put some washi tape around the edges but that's just what I'm doing this lives in a very fun portfolio made for me by Tammy Blaylock creative country girl what Tammy did was I gave her one of my stitched pieces this was a sense and sensibility piece by um the Stitching Book Club. Yeah, Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts, Kristen. And I just wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. And Tammy made it into this cool portfolio for me. So yeah, yeah, that's where that's living right now while I'm working on, working on that one. Okay, my next whip is a Praiseworthy Stitches, other oldie, Blue Moon Manor. I will, when I post my thing, I will post a little progress pick up there. Um, I love this one. This, I love, this moon is so cute. Uh, I haven't done a ton of stitching on this one. Uh, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of floss. There's blend, there's glow in the dark blending filament. There's beads, there's buttons, you name it, you name it. But this is where I am. I'm stitching this on the call for fabric. It is 32 count cauldron by picture this plus. I did get a little bit of work done on there this year. Not as much as I would have liked, of course, but yep, I do have a decent start going. This lives in a really cute bag made by Lynn X Stitches Creates. She has a floss tube and makes really fabulous project bags as well. Check her out. All right. This one just started not that long ago. Um, I, for the last couple of years, have stitched on the full moon of every month with some sweet friends, um, Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World, and Karen of Fox and Rabbit, and um, Jules, Jules Darling of Instagram. And we had a big project going, and then we kind of, uh, kind of fell off, fell off working on it. Um, maybe we just got a little bit, I don't know. I don't know, there's a lot of things, but anyway, Julie suggested we work on some smaller projects to kind of get the juices going again. So a couple months ago, we started this one. It's called By the Light of the Moon. Um, it is by the Primitive Needle. It was a freebie chart many years ago and still is a freebie chart. Uh, this is where I am. I don't know if I ever, this was a new start, so I won't have like an old picture or anything like that, but I will pop a picture up here of what the finished product is supposed to look like because I don't have anything printed out for that. I did a kind of, version on this one with fancy floss from my stash. I think it's looking pretty good. It's it's also on a stash remnant of, um, I think it's a 32 count Jobelin dense fog. Yeah, I would like to get that one done in the next couple months as well. There's not a lot left to it except that border. There's a lot of border left. Okay. All right. One of my favorite things to stitch um, are Mirabilia's. Let me introduce you to Miss Charlotte here. Charlotte was the um, unofficial official <laughs> stitch for the Queen City Stitch Retreat that I attended this past um, October, hosted by Amy of Fiber Arts, Amy and Oak Crown Studios, and Maggie of Kitchy Whips. Um, Nora Corbett was there. 
I had an amazing time. I had an amazing table full of stitchers that I just adore. Best, best retreat. It was, it was so much fun. But um, some people stitched Charlotte. It was, it took place in Charlotte, North Carolina. So some people stitched Charlotte before we got there. Some started her before we got there. Some started her while they were there. There were no rules, but this is Charlotte. I started Charlotte on a piece of 32 count Queen Crepe Myrtle by Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. Let me see. This is where I am. Did not get a ton of progress on her. I love this piece of fabric. The floss is DMC and it just goes so well with this. Let me just, I, I just, it just really, everything really just pops really great on there. I'm really excited about it. So, um, yeah, she's a beauty. Charlotte also has a ton of treasures. Treasures are little beads, um, special beads by Mill Hill. So, um, that is Miss Charlotte. Love her. Charlotte, let's see, she's MD112, and she, let's see what her copyright was. She's not out of print. She's still in print, and, oh, I don't see the date on her. You can look her up on the Mirabilia site if you're really interested, right? Okay, my next one, this was fun. This was a treat. This was a new start for me this year. This was during Christmas in July. I had a great time. I always love to stitch Christmas in July. This is Christmas Cove by By the Bay Needle Arts. I love many of these coves by By the Bay. I have several of them and I can't wait to stitch them. I love that huge tree. Look at that angel up there. Yeah, it's great. So, Tiny, tiny start on this one. I'm stitching this on a 32 count natural raw linen using, let's see what kind of floss we got going here. DMC, there's only one fancy floss and just a couple beads. Beads are red for the holly berries. It lives in a really cool bag. This is another bag by Tammy. Um, Play lot creative country girl gifted to me by my friend Zan, crazy band lady stitches. It's got a good pocket. I love the like vintage type um, material. So cute. So cute. So I have two whips called Christmas Cove. My second whip named Christmas Cove is, was a unicorn of mine for quite some time. And it's a new start for me, um, a new Christmas start for me. And like I said, this is Christmas Cove, <clears throat> the gold collection. Um, I searched for this for quite a, quite a long time. Uh, Every now and again, it is available on the secondhand market, particularly on eBay, if you want to do like a saved search in there. Um, I, a wonderful stitcher reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in purchasing this set minus the fabric because I didn't have the fabric and so the price was right and the, uh, the situation was right and I jumped right on it. So I love this one. I think it's a beautiful chart. Um, I loved the trees with the snow on it and the sky. Of course, there's Santa down there. Um, Hello from Liz Matthews is stitching this one as well. And she's got like a bunch of this area, like a lot worked on. It looks really, really good. Um, Angela loves the stitches, also stitching on this one. And um, yeah, doing great, doing great. So here's where we are. So I replaced the called for, which was a um, 16 count dove gray Ada with a 16 count, um, a touch of gray Ada. So not a huge difference. I just have a little center start on that. Where that is, is see that dark area, that rectangle. It's just the, sorry, there's a glare right there. Just the sign right there and some snow is what I've got going. I hate to put it up, but um, I'm glad I did finally get a start on it after being a unicorn for so long. But <clears throat> I do have some massive goals this year. One thing I want to say is I have been intimidated to start this dimensions chart for quite some time because all of the threads just came in those big bundles. And I was like, how in the world am I going to sort this? How am I going to keep this organized? I went to watch my friend Catherine, the Needleberry Stitcher. She has a floss tube video with how she sorts her dimensions kit floss. It was super helpful to me. I took tons of her ideas and found a little system that works well for me. And I, th I think it's gonna be great. And I think it's gonna help me be able to stitch this um, quickly without having to go back and look at the key all the time. And sorting that floss was not the end of the world. Um, maybe if you just absolutely despise sorting Mill Hill floss, you might wanna get a friend to help you. <laughs> 
but uh yeah it was it didn't end up being the end of the world but it definitely held me back from starting that for a long time all right my next stitch is a christmas eve sampler by joan elliott uh, I love Joan Elliott has some great stuff. Um, she does several of these samplers with different holidays and seasons. This is the only one I have going. I did make a change. It's charted with 310. So it's black with the gold crinic. And I decided I didn't really want to do it in black. So I did it in a really, really dark green. I chose DMC 500. I'm stitching this on a piece of 32 count vintage smoky white. Just, it's a Zweigart. It's, it's really nice. And there's my progress. This is a very enjoyable stitch, you know, because it is, if you're in the mood for a monochromatic, um, I did make a little progress on it this year, not tons, but I do love this one. And I look forward to having that one done someday. All right. My next one is another Christmas stitch. And I think it's like, oh, I always have the hardest time with the name of this one. I think it's Christmas in my heart and it's by Barbara Anna and it was in one of those Christmas cross stitch books. Um, I'm stitching this one on a piece of 32 count vintage maritime white by Lakeside Linens. And I'll pop where I was. Up. First of all, I'll pop up what that's supposed to look like. And then this is what I have done. And then I'll also pop up how my progress has been so you can compare it from the beginning of the year. So not a ton, but oh, it's super cute. Super cute. I like the big tree in this one too. Oh, this cutie. This cutie. Y'all have seen him before. I'm sure his name is, he, he's, this is the Christmas Moose by Panna. He came as a kit. I am stitching him with my friends, um, Nancy and Jenny of the Bougie Stitchers. Hashtag Marty the Christmas Moose Sal. They stitch on him on snow days. In Memphis, we rarely, if ever, have a snow day. So he's my precipitation stitch. Um, I started off the year really good last year with him, doing stitches on him on precipitation days. And then I completely fell off. Um, so this year, so far, I've already had a rainy day. So I have gotten some stitches in on him. I'm stitching him on a piece of 32 count Arctic Blast by Seraphim. I did not use the kit fabric for him. I will pop up a picture of my progress of, of where I was last year and where I am this year. Got plenty of hanging threads there, but this is definitely one of those pieces where I'm doing some parking. So, yes, I'm almost done with this side. Almost done. And then I'm going to move down and I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to finish off the rest of this, the rest of his face and body and then move to the other, the other antler. Yeah. It is my intention to pull him out on rainy or snowy or icy days this this year. He lives in a really cute um, Garon Toten bags. Garon Toten bags are some of my favorite project bags. And I'm a, I am a Disney fan. So, love that Mickey Mouse. This chart is Christmas Village. It's by the Victoria Sampler. Now, this is a cautionary tale, tale of what happens when you keep your charts with the face of your chart on the front of um, a vinyl project bag. All that white on there, that's where it stuck to it when it got warm. Just in my house. It wasn't like I left it in my car or anything. Um, it was a Christmas Village by the Victoria Sampler. I fell in love with this chart while I was visiting a shop called the Stitchery Nook up in Iowa. Um, congratulations to um, Sherry and Elizabeth of the Stitchery Nook. They've had some um, developments and news uh, that I just read the other day. And so congratulations to you two on um, your business decisions. It's a great shop. They're wonderful. Um, so nice. I've also got to meet them at market. And they kit this up for me. They kit this up for me and they got me the um, thread packs. So in the fabric and everything. So my goal for Christmas in July for this one was the very center of this chart, which I wanted to start this one in the center, um, is this lettering right here. And this lettering is all over one. So I didn't get a whole lot done on that. And it just kind of languished for a while. It was a birthday start for me one year. And so my goal this past Christmas in July was to finish that over one lettering and I did it. 
I finished my over one lettering. So here we are. Yay. So now I can quit being intimidated by that over one lettering. I'm stitching this on the called for fabric, which is a 28 count smoky pearl linen. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. It lives in a very cute project bag by Dot Dot Goose. More Mickey Mouse there. And like I said, I, I got the little, little thread packs with it, which are super helpful. So, you know, you don't need all that extra. And you can get all the silks and everything you need because it is charter and silks. Um, okay, this next one I did not work on at all last year. This is in my one of my walk of shame pieces. <laughs> this is um, Cinderella Wishes. It is a Thomas Kincaid Disney Dreams kit. This is out of print. They are um, not impossible to find, but not the easiest to get all the time. Um, here's where I am, same place I was last year. That's gonna be the upper left corner. That's the sky. I'm stitching this on a gridded, um, I guess that's an Ada. I don't know what, I don't know what I'm, what size this is. It's not 14, it's probably 16. But yeah, that's where I am. It is full coverage. I have a long way to go. I have all of my floss organized in those panko type um, organizers. It lives in a very cute bag with, it was a whole set that um, Black Cat Stitchery made up for me. I love it. I bothered her while she was at a retreat. Somebody else had like a princess bag and I'm like, please, please. So she made me a little kit. But yep, that's where I am. I did not work on that one time this year. So it is on my whip go walk of shame. All right, so that is my first cubby down. Um, excuse me for just a minute while I put that up and pull down my next cubby. Okay, on to cubby number two. This next one did not get any attention this past year and it is on my Whip Go Walk of Shame. It is Coffee First. That is by Luminous Fiber Arts. I think this is the cutest chart and it is, um, um, being stitched for a coffee lover in my life. I'm stitching this. I think I couldn't find the called for fabric at the time, but this is a P. Oh, it is. It says Peter R. Dapple. So this is a 32 count. No, 36 count Dapple. If I picture this plus, I just have some of those border stitches done. I'm stitching this with um, the called for fancy floss. And I think there's some DMCs. It lives in a really, really cute bag by my friend Tara, the 805 stitcher. I love narwhals. So that is on my whip go for this year to get some attention. This next one is a very new start. This is my new year new start. It is Cut Through Wedding by Bothy Threads. I'm stitching this to celebrate my husband and I's 25th wedding anniversary this year. I think it's adorable. I'm very excited about it. I was planning to stitch it with the kit fabric, which is Ada, but then I got to looking at all of the back stitch on this and I thought that I might find the stitching back stitching more enjoyable if it was done on an even weave. So I chose a piece from my stash. It is um, called Stonewashed and it is by Seraphim Fabrics. And this is where I am. Yeah. So just a little bit of the yellow background going in there. It's 200 stitches. Yeah, I'm looking forward to working on this year. This is one that I would like to have finished this year, but it is not my utmost finished priority. So if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But I think it would be fun because it's our anniversary year. This is in a beautiful project bag made for me by my sister-in-law, Rivertown Designs US. She even did like a four leaf clover and a heart for me. Um, our anniversary is St. Patrick's Day. So yeah, love it, love it. That's a fun one. That is my first um, like cut through piece. I was inspired to start one by Pam of Just Keep Stitching. I love the one that she did. All right, this next one I started with um, for my friend Lolly of Lollipop Stitches. And uh, it is a Dance, Dance, Dance by Mama Witch X Stitch. I do not have the, um, it, it's, it was a PD, it's a PDF, so I'll put the picture up of here. This is where I am. I had, did get some progress this year, and I'll put my last year's progress up there. 
Um, this is stitched on a one-of-a-kind uh, linen by Forbidden Fiber Co. And I think it's a 32 count. Look, how, so this little straw hat, whew, that was a lot of color changes, but this is adorable. I love this. This is such a fun one. And I don't even think, I don't even have the best part stitched yet. Like the frog is super cute and the lanterns. I just love this one. So I am looking forward to um, continuing to stitch that to celebrate my friend Lolly. This one did not get any attention this year. Um, this is Dandelion Stitches by Rosewood Manor. I started this one last year. I believe it was last year. And I started it for the Garon Designer Focus, which is a super fun thing to take part in every year. Um, Gary and Ronnie, what they do is they assign a designer for each month of the year. And then they just encourage everyone to stitch on that designer. Um, and they also run a sale in their online store for that designer for that month. And so I started this one, Dandelion Wishes. I, I think this is a really pretty chart and I love what it says. Um, it says, when you look at a field of dandelions, you can either see a hundred weeds or a thousand wishes. And I love that sentiment. So I do love this, but I did not super duper enjoy stitching this is why I didn't work on it last year. I'm stitching this on a piece of 32 count picture this plus dwarf and um I think it's looking great but I just it's a lot of white stitching. It's not super exciting. There are a couple beads but um yeah so that's where I am. So it is on my whip go walk of shame um for this year and it's I am going to finish this. I'm not going to UFO this because I do think it's pretty and I do really like what it says, and I do want to hang it up. But I'm not finding the stitching of it super enjoyable, just because it's a bunch of white words. Um, I love this bag. This bag is by Beverly, a stitch in piece. You can find her on Etsy. So cute. So Those birds are so adorable. Once I finish this chart, um, I, I know what I'm putting in this, <laughs> in this bag. All right, my next one, um, it got attention last year, but it's been on ice for several months. This is my Dark Queen of the Earth by um, Autumn Lane Stitchery. It was a stitch along last year. It wrapped up in September. This is where I am. I'm stitching this on a gorgeous piece of 32 count gilded oak opalescent fabric by Leslie at Under the Sea Fabrics. This is so beautiful. The colors, everything about it is just a gorgeous thing. Um, I've stopped because I cannot decide what to do about her head and hair situation. Erin gave us two choices plus an, another alternate and I want to do kind of a mix of all of them, <laughs> of the elements of each design that I like the best but I am not a cross-stitch designer. So it is gonna take me some time. And so I really will have to devote some time and energy to making that to what I really have a vision for now and what I want to see. Um, so basically this is where we stand until I have that bandwidth and that just that time that I'm gonna devote to it to finish her. I, this is gorgeous and I love, I love it on this fabric. It is so pretty. The colors are so pretty. Um, this piece, uh, and I'll pop the, oh, did I do that already? Like, let me pop the picture up of where I was last year and where I am now. Yeah, I worked on this a lot at the Steel City Stitcher Retreat last spring. Very cute. It lives in a beautiful bag that I had, I asked, the custom made by Jen of, um, why am I blanking on Jen's name? Jasmine's custom bags. I asked her to make me. I picked up this fabric. This is my special dark queen of the earth um, project bag. I love it. I love it so much. And she put on the inside like this beautiful like wood. This is great. This is a beautiful bag. So someday when I have the time and energy to devote to um, making my vision come to life, um, I will be getting back to that one. This next chart did not get any attention last year and I love it so um I'm ready to work on it some this year this is the dinosaur forest by Alla Forest Embroidery I think it's so cute I like dinosaurs I like Jurassic Park all of the things this is where I am this is where I was last year it's stitched on a piece of the kit linen I think it's like a 32 count yep it's living in a really cute project bag by Little Boat 88 had a hard time finding a project bag with dinosaurs on it, but dinosaurs on Christmas. I love Christmas, so isn't that cute? Yeah. So that will be getting some attention um, this year. It is on my Whipco board. 
Next one's on my Whipple board too. This is a visit to Downton, Sheener Rogers Designs. These little pillows. I ordered this all the way from the UK many, many moons ago. <laughs> I do not have much stitched on it. This is where I am. And it will. it is on my Whipco board this year. But I like this. I like this pattern a lot. I love the show Downton Abbey. It's a fabulous show. It lives in a very, very cute Garon Tote Bags bag with all the honey and the bees on it. So cute. All right. Oh, here comes another fancy lady. Well, she's a fairy. This is um, going to be Fairy Flora by Mirabilia. So Fairy Flora is one of um, um, one of the older patterns by Mirabilia. This is MD number seven. Uh, she came out in 1994. I love her. She is gorgeous. Um, the stitchers from the Floss Tubes Licking Floss and Cross Stitching the Globe have started a stitch along with this one after she retired. Hashtag Fairy Flora Retirement Sal. So I am going to put some more stitches into her this year, make her one of my focal um, fancy ladies. I don't have a ton done on her. I am stitching her on a piece of 32 count barnwood by Picture This Plus. There's a whole story about this fabric and why it's perfect for this piece, but I love her so much, but that's where I am. Not a ton of progress done, but yeah, a little bit, a little bit. She's a beauty. She has pretty, pretty DMC. Not a ton of beads because she is an earlier Mirabilia, but she does have some beads. And she lives in a really pretty um, project bag I have by Lake House Stitch Co. That's Gigi out of Florida. And you can find Gigi on, um, let's see, that little blue mushroom. Yep, Lake House Stitch Co. All right. I have another mirror. No, this one is not a mirror. So sorry. So sorry. This one was my birthday start this past year. There is quite the adventure about this one. Um, I bleached some fabric following the pattern instructions. Um, I talk about it all in my last floss tube, which was an update for the month of December. So go check that out for the full story. But this is going to be Firefly Fairies by Lavender and Lace. I've wanted I searched for this one for a while um I, I've been wanting to stitch it I love those fairies they're just gorgeous um the kit tell it gives you very specific instructions about how to bleach your fabric this fabric's about to look crazy it doesn't look this crazy in real life but um see how that fabric looks where it's all bleached out and all that magic's coming off I stitched this on a piece of 32 count elephant run by fox and rabbit I know you're like, what the heck? So pink fairy down here, middle fairy up here. Just imagine this is the magic at the top. A lot of this stuff you're not gonna see. Um, there's beautiful DMC and bees with this one. But if you can kind of imagine, mm, I don't know, I need one of those board things, but like this situation going on, that's kind of like the outline. Yeah, more like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, I am excited to have started this one. I've been wanting to start that for a while. But once again, I was intimidated by bleaching <laughs> my fabric and all of the things. I am glad that I took the leap and I gave that a go. Um, I do believe that Amy Fiber Arts, Amy of Oak Crown Studios, who is now dying fabric under Oak Crown Studios, that's her thing. She is going to have some fabric listed at some point um, that has a kind of a kind of intended for this chart with the blotchy magic situation going on. So keep an eye on her shop. I don't know if it's out there or not. It lives in this beautiful project bag again, made for me by my sister-in-law, Rivertown Designs US. These fabulous dragons on the back, because you know. I am equating the Firefly Fairies with the fairies from Sleeping Beauty and Maleficent and the dragon and all the things. So I love this bag. It's awesome. All right. This one's going to be on my Whip Go Walk of Shame this year. This is by my friend Colleen, Rebel Stitcher Designs, and his flowers grow back. I started this with a bunch of my friends at StitchCon, not last year, the year before. Hashtag flowers grow back, Sal. This is beautiful. I love this chart. It is charted with cottage garden threads, which my friend Zan bought me the whole set of. 
she's amazing. And then I chose a piece of 36 count um, Love Potion by Forbidden Fiber Co. And that's where we are. No progress from last year, but this is a beautiful piece of fabric. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a beautiful whip. Beautiful, beautiful. So you'll see some of that this year because it'll it's on my whip go. This next one is by my friend Colleen again, Rebel Stitcher Designs. This was a pattern that came out, I believe, at Market last year. It's her Civil Samplers chart. So Motor City Stitchers, I think that's right. They started a stitch along called hashtag Civil Sampler Sal. So I started this chart folding chair. Um, folding chair. This one um, says, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. Um, and it talks about Shirley Anita Chisholm was an American politician who in 1968 became the first black woman to be elected to the U.S. Congress. Anyway, very cool chart. I love this stitch because I, it's a very connected for me with all of my friends. So it was designed by Colleen Rebel Stitcher. Um, it was model stitched by my friend Justine of X's and Hose. I'm stitching this on a piece of fabric um, by my friend Leanne of Forbidden Fiber Co. It's called Under the Mistletoe. It's 40 count. And I am using my friend Ymir Almond M&M's gorgeous silks to stitch it with. This is Writer's Chair. Let me see. I'm, right now I've got Writer's Chair chosen and this is my favorite berry blue. It's like my favorite blue color. How amazing is that? Yeah. So you can find Ymir's online Almond m and studio. Look at that. I love this one. Love this one. Okay, this next one is a very recent start and super, super fun. I started this one with my friends from Table 4 from the Queen City Stitch Retreat, and that is going to be Going to Grandma's by um, Praiseworthy Stitches. So I started this. My friends at my table um, were, let's see, uh, we've got Jordan the Tattooed Stitcher, Amber Rogue Mama Stitcher, Bernadette from Burn Stitches, we have Denise from Black Ribbon Stitch Studio, Deb from Stitches of Heritage on Instagram, and then Lisa crossed by Floss on YouTube on, on Floss Tube. So everybody at Floss Tubes except for Deb, she's on Instagram and go check out her Instagram account. It is fabulous. So everybody with the exception of Deb, because her calling card is very full with um, model stitching and stuff this year, um, we're working on this one. And it is going to Grandma's by Praiseworthy Stitches. So um, our stitch along is hashtag table four is going to grandma's. And I chose a piece of 36 count um, Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. It's called A Very Peri Winter. This is my start. And this one was so fun. I'm loving it. I chose this 36 count because it is charted with a bunch of fancy floss. And I feel like this big old house is going to eat some fancy floss. So on top of liking the color, I was trying to be more mm, frugal in my choice so my fancy floss would go a little further but i am excited to work on this one this year we have some fun zooms set up and um yeah i just love this group table four is awesome it is in one of my very favorite bags my sister-in-law from rivertown designs us has ever made me i love this one i love the vintage fabric i love the christmas trees and the lace so cute so so cute okay look at this one this one's been around a hot minute. My little sheet that I pull out to show you during floss tubes is a little worn out. This is Halloween at Hawkward Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. I'm doing this stitch along, hashtag um, Halloween at HRH Sal. Well, I think that's what it is. I'm gonna have to put it up there below. Um, I'm stitching those with my friends. Um, Let's see, Bobby of Pumpkin Creek Primitives, Sam of Sammy Liz, and Leanne of Leanne Stitches. Well, we've been working on this one. Um, we've recently kind of kicked our Zooms back up again, and we've had a couple more stitchers join us. Um, Sarah, hum Big Red Human Crafter on Instagram, and Justine of X's and Hose. And so, here we go. 32 count, picture this plus Heather. This is where I am. Try to get it all in the... I'm stitching this with a DMC conversion. I love it. Let's see what I don't, I didn't get a ton completed this year. I'll put that up there, but I am on that middle block and I really think I'll be having a zoom on this one at least once a, once a month. So I will be working on this one once a month. And I just, 
I love it. It is so fun to stitch this one. It's just, it's just fun. I don't have any other way to say it. I could be happily just work on this one. But I have focuses for this year and priorities and things that must be done. And Pock Run Hollow is very enjoyable. So I don't mind dragging it out. <laughs> the next one I would like to start would be the Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow. That would be next on my list of Hawk Run Hollows to start, which my sweet friend Zan bought for me. Um, a Stitch New England retreat this year. So, let me get that one kitted up. All right, what is next? This one. I think this one is so cute. I'm sorry I didn't take it out of the plastic. Um, this is Halloween Ball. This is by a Cooler Classic Chart. I think this one is so cute. I love it. I restarted it this year, so I don't have a ton done, but it is on a piece of Spellbound by Under the Sea Fabrics. Um, I think you can see it much better than you did in the past. That's where I am. I have a lot of really, really cute um, Halloween whips. So uh, I'm, I'm busy during Halloween. I think I, I started a stitch, like a hashtag last Halloween, hashtag stitch your spooky stuff. And so I will be working on stitch your spooky stuff in the month of October where I stitch on all of my spooky stuff. I'm gonna, I'll make a goal for how many stitches and give myself until Halloween to get it done. Um, my next one was a start on Halloween this past year and it is a Teresa Kogut and it is the Halloween Sampler. This is a wonderful book if you've ever had a chance to look through it. Lots of great, lots of great future stitches in there. I love this one. So cute. I picked up the um, Vicki Clayton Silk Conversion Pack um, from the Garon Stitchery website. This is a super cute Teresa Coquette Halloween bag by Black Cat X Stitchery. Everything is just super matchy matchy. <laughs> and I'm stitching this on a piece of 40 count Swamp Monster. Swamp Monster. I can't ever say that by Laura's Fabrics. Laura is the daughter of RATM, and you can find her fabrics for sale at, at their LNS, Riverview Stitching, and I believe they have, I, I think you can order them online from her. I'm not sure. Isn't that a cool fabric? I like it. It is a fun project. This next one is the Halloween wreath by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. I'm gonna post a picture up here because I don't have that printed out. Um, this is where I am this year. I'm stitching this on a piece of 28 count pewter by Picture This Plus. That was the call for kit fabric. I ordered the whole kit. I did stitch in the past the Christmas wreath, so I thought it would be fun to do the Halloween wreath and make this one into a pillow as well. Um, there's my progress for the year, not tons, but it's a fun stitch. I think I like Christmas better than Halloween and I like Christmas colors better than Halloween colors, but I still think it's a cute stitch. I've seen it finished. So um, Amanda that lives here and goes to our 901 Stitchers get togethers, she thinks she completely finished it. It looked great and it looked great. So this one, who's this bag by? Oh, another Lake House Stitch Co. bag. Very cute. Oh, now this is probably my, hmm. <laughs> It's probably tied with Hawkorn Hollow as my favorite Halloween stitch. This is Happy Haunts by Good Morning Maui. <sighs> like, I love this one so much, I don't even really want to finish, but I'm going to finish. I would like to finish this this year. Um, I'm stitching this one on a piece of 16 count graceful gray. Ada, and this is where I am. Oh, I love it so much. I've just got the top two rows to do, and they're very exciting. Oh, I'll post a picture up of where I was last year. So not tons of progress done, but oh, it's so fun. There's so much, so many details. Oh, I just want to get in there close so you can see. I love this one. I'm going to, I'm going to frame this. I'd like to frame this in some, like, I'm going to keep my eye out for like some big old ornate frame, even if I have to like paint it black, you know? Like kind of gothic -y looking. Yeah. It lives in one of this. I love this Halloween bag. This is by So Much to Love. Look at that. Oh, so cute. That's one of my favorite Halloween whips. That's pretty much like tied with Halloween at Hot Run Hollow. This was a new start for me this year. And I've just bent it all up. That's what I'm saying. I'm hard on these. This is um, Haunted Cottage 
by Mill Hill. I started this at the Stitch New England retreat. I love this one. I started it because it was I was up in Massachusetts and this cottage really reminds me of the Sanderson sisters from Hocus Pocus, their cottage. And so I do have a little start on it. I'm stitching it with the kit perforated paper. Here's where I am. Oh, I've really bent that thing all up. To be more careful with that. It's like in a little teeny tiny bag. It's probably part of the problem. Ooh. Okay, this next one is going to be on my Walk of Shame Whip Go for this year. It's called It's Cool to Care. It is a Care Bears chart. I um, started stitching this to join Maggie Kitchy Whip Sal. Hashtag totally tubular Sal. I thought it would be fun. I don't know if I'm going to frame it or make it into a project bag, but I think it's cool to care. Never goes out no matter what. Uh, decade you're stitching from but this is from the 80s um it is on a piece of super crunchy kit ada and there's where i am I said no progress this past year but very fun bright colors this next one is a Nora Corbett, my start for Nora November. Nora November is hosted by my friend Lisa of Cross by Floss. So she does a thing in May called Mira May and then another event in November called Nora November. She also hosts Mira Monday Stitching. Um, this is June Bug. So I started this one this back this past November, basically as a nod to my friend Pam over at Stitching in the Land of Good Enough, also the owner of Stitch New England. Um, Pam hosts a fancy folk Zoom during the month and she worked on June Bug. And so she inspired me to start stitching her as well as Maggie Kitchy Whips. She stitched her too and she's so cute. So I started her on a piece of my friend Amy's like when she was just dying it and I bought it, you know, I got it because she's my friend. So this is a piece of like 28 count Monaco and there's where my start is. Yep. Very cute. Love this one. Um, I thought this would be appropriate that it lives in this cute little watermelon bag. You get on stitchery. <laughs> very summery. Very June buggy and buggy. All right, okay. So that is it for cubby number two. So, oh, how did this see stuff just get so out of place? What a mess. All right, so stand by for just a few minutes while I put up, um, I get down cubby number three. Okay, on to cubby number three. So one thing that's kind of funny that you might not know that when you're going through all of your whips and you're digging out all of your stuff out of your bags, you find a lot of scissors and a lot of needle minders. And then I found lots of these, <laughs> which are the little magnets, whoops, that you can buy on Amazon that um, help hold your fabric around Q-snaps. And then the other thing that I found were a lot of needles. So I filled this pin cushion up pretty good. Um, this pin cushion was gifted to me by Denise of Black Ribbon Stitch Studios at um, Queen City Stitch Retreat this year. She made it. Love it, but yeah, found lots of needles too. So, okay, what's up next? Oh, I love this one. Oh, I started this with my friend Leanne, Leanne Stitches. You're gonna notice I start a lot of things with Leanne. Leanne and I, we know how to get into trouble together. This is Kringles by Little House Needleworks. We had some kind of goals on this this past year. Um, I think Christmas in July, we wanted to get a floor done and neither one of us got anything done on poor old Kringles, but I love this chart. This is one of those charts that I wanna have up and have framed fairly quickly because um, I want my grandkids to be able to grow up with this one and look at it and think about, you know, oh, it's Christmas and look what's in the windows. And anyway, so I'm stitching this on the called for fabric, which is 30 count Parisian gray by Access Commodities. This is where I am. Uh, I don't think I got a ton done this year. You'll have to look at the progress photo. I can't remember. Uh, this project and I, we've had our ups and downs. And once again, we're having a down because it goes like this. <laughs> anyway, I have frogged this one. I have miscounted, you name it, I've done it. Look at all those bricks. But yeah, <sighs> when I do finish this piece someday, which Leanne and I, maybe we can work on this more this coming Christmas in July. Um, yeah, 
someday it's going to be a real achievement. Oh, this one I've been stitching on forever and I have no intentions of getting in a hurry about it whatsoever. I am stitching this with my friends, um, Bobby of Pumpkin Creek Primitives and Carrie of Three Trail Stitchers. This is Labyrinth Friends by the Little Stitcher. There's my little needle minder for this one. He's so cute. I am stitching um, this. This is our hashtag bog of eternal stench style that we really only stitch on when we zoom. We did a terrible job zooming last year, so we've already zoomed once this month, so we're, we're doing good. Um, here's where I am. I'm stitching this on a piece of 20 count awakening by Be Stitch Me. So the other night I worked on Hoggle some and I was just tired and I was just wanting to visit. And for some reason, the 310 in my Floss drop wasn't there. There was no 310. And so I just stopped right there <laughs> on his shoe. I'll get it next time we, we, I'll get it next month when we zoom again. But yeah, fun, fun stitch with my friends. Like I said, we're not in any hurry because we mostly just like to talk anyway. And I was so happy that um, Whitney and Sarah, the other members of Three Tail Stitchers, they got to join us for a little bit. So it was nice to catch up with them too. This next one is on my Whipco Walk of Shame board for this year. Um, today was, yesterday was the first day where I was supposed to stitch on it, so I did. It's Let Freedom Ring by Leela's Studio. This is a beautiful chart. I did not get to see the Liberty Bell this past October like I wanted to in Philly because of COVID and I didn't get to go to the retreat, but I am going to be stitching it. I am stitching this on a piece of 32 count, not another sampler by Be Stitch Me. This is where I am. I did get some done yesterday, so I will pop a progress picture up so you can see the changes from, well, yesterday to <laughs> that I didn't, because I didn't work on it at all last year. So I hope I took a picture. Yes, I did. Okay, so here we are. Yeah, I love it. Um, what goes in this, this cartouche here is there's going to be some over one stitching, so I'll tackle that soon, but the colors are gorgeous. I do have about an inch and a half margin up here top, so I know that's pretty tight but I have a little extra down at the bottom and plenty on the side. So it's going to be a tight frame, but it is what it is. It's going to fit. So someday, but this is a big piece, but I love those flowers. Love, love, love. All right. So I've got one more Saturday slated on my board to work on that one. This next one, I love this one. I did not stitch on this at all last year. So it's on my whip go. This is, I'm gonna pop a picture up here. This is Marvelous World by Lindy Stitches. Lindy Stitches is one of the hosts of the Jingle Bell, the Jingle Ball. And when we were listening to like her meet and greet or morning update or something, we were listening to her talk about, somebody asked her a question of what was one of her charts that didn't sell that well, that maybe she was surprised about. I don't remember if she was surprised or not, but it just didn't sell that well was Marvelous World. And I love this one, so I don't know why, but. Here's where I am. I would like to finish this one. I just always feel like I can get so much progress on it. It is on the most gorgeous piece of fabric. It is 32 count sea spray by Seraphim. Doesn't that look like you're looking down into the ocean with like the sand on the bottom? Oh, it's so good. I love this. I love this whip. So I would like to finish it soon. Lives in a really, really cute Garon Toten bags. Tulip pink bag. So cute. So cute. Not until that long ago, I didn't know that Tulip Pink was a real person. I just thought it was the name of the fabric company. I don't know that much about fabrics, y'all. Uh, all right. This is another one of my um, up there as far as favorite goes, Halloween whips. This is by the Snowflower Diaries, May the Spirits. Oh, my goodness. It says, um, may the only spirits that invade your home at Halloween be the happy spirits of friends. I'm going to try to rechart this and I'm going to change like invade to visit. This is beautiful. I'm stitching this with a called for fabric and the called for floss all by XU Designs. The fabric is a 40 count gold sand. And this is where I am. I did get some good progress in this past year. Yes, I love it. I love it. Look how delicate those flowers are. Look at that cat. So good it's so good yeah I love this one beautiful beautiful next one I started with my friend Sam from Sammy Liz 
who I'm happy to say just filmed a whip parade recently and has back to the floss tube world. We have missed her. Um, I started this for her birthday one year. Um, it's by, I can't even remember who it's by. I'm going to put the picture up here. It's some 17 princesses, but you can't get it anymore because, you know, like Disney copyright and all the things. And so this is Megara and um, Panic. And I'm stitching this on a piece of I think it's 32 count opalescent hibiscus by Be Stitch Me. So cute. So I want to finish this one. And um, did I work on it this year? I think I must have done a few stitches on it because I don't think it's on my walk of shame whip go. But um, I, I want to make this, I think, into a project bag. I think that's what I want to do with it. I want to do something fun with it because it's a fun chart. This next one, I love this one so much. This is a Mirabilia Mermaid. This is Mermaid of the Pearls. She is out of print. Um, she is MD26, copyright 1997. She is one of the most heavily beaded Mirabilias. She is a beautiful. I am stitching her on a piece of 32 count Kelpie by Under the Sea Fabrics. I did get some work on in on her this year. I got a lot done on her hair. I love that bubble, those bubbles down there. They're so good. Oh gosh, all this confetti on this fin almost did me in. It really, really almost did. I love this. I, ooh, she's up there on my list of needing concentration and focus as far as mirrors go. She is high up there. Um, first on my list is touching the autumn sky because I have, that is borrowed from someone. Um, then I think the forest goddess, because she's almost done and I love her. And then probably Mermaid of the Pearls or Fairy Floor. It's kind of a toss up. She lives in this fabulous bag by Garon Tone Bags. This is one of my favorite Garon Tone Bag bags. Look at that seahorse. Beautiful. Oh, this one is so cute. I just want to get this one done. It's called Midnight Magic. I'm going to pop a picture up here. It's by Stitch Rovia and the Congdon. It was found in a magazine. I don't remember which magazine. It's probably the Cross Stitcher. Um, and this is where I am on it this year. I'm stitching this on a piece of, I think it's 16 count Picture This Plus Mystic. Uh, Mystic is one of my favorite Picture This Plus blues. It, I really like it on a linen. But it's, it's beautiful on the Ada, too. It just dyes a little bit different. Yeah. I love this one. This one is in a really fun bag. Who stitched this bag? Hmm. It's like sparkly with... Um, and it's got... Mickey and Minnie in there. I feel like this is a Cricklewood Crossing bag. Not 100% sure, but I love that bag. This next one is on my whip go walk of shame. This is Mrs. Hen by Stitchy Princess Black. Go check her out on um, Etsy. She has tons of really, really great um, charts. She's wonderful. And I just have the littlest start. This is on a 32 count stone nougat. Here we are. No progress. I love this chart though. Reminds me of that movie Pop with that little naughty chicken that says Kurita. Like it's just it's so cute. This one lives in a really fun so much to love chicken bag. And I have even some if I remember. Oh yeah. Some really cute floss bling with a chicken on it. Oh come on, turn around there. Yeah, cute. Cute, cute. I started this on Mother's Day a couple of years ago. I don't know. I need to get busy on that one because I just that one would not take me that long. Oh, uh, this one. This one I started at my very first retreat, which happened to be the Steel City Stitcher Retreat in 2022. This is um, Bothy Threads. It is a um, Rendell Designs. Uh, no calls for a llama. I love these Rendell Designs done by Bothy Threads. They're adorable. Oh, so cute. It reminds me of this llama called Caesar, the no drama llama. He lives out in Oregon. Um, this is where I am. So I'm not a ton done. I did stitch a little X up here at the top. So I remember which way was up. But now that I've got glasses stitched in, I think I would know anyway. Um, the Rendell designs from the Bothy Threads kits, they have this really cute speckling on their Ada fabric. I love it. I love it. So that one will get a little love this year. It's on the Whipgo board. 
as will this one. This one's on the Whipco board as well. I'm gonna pop a picture up of this one here. This is Platinum Jubilee by Siren Stitchworks. Um, let's see, I'm stitching this on a piece of 32 count Heroic by Picture This Plus. This is where I am, it's gorgeous. I was wanting to sort of incorporate into there some kind that Queen Elizabeth did pass away in 2022, but then somebody's like, no, I don't do that. And you know what, no, I'm not gonna do that. I think they're right, so I'm just gonna leave it as is. I think it'd be a pretty pillow. I love that Scottish thistle. I got an English rose, so pretty. I like Siren Stitch Works. They were very, very um, helpful to me when I was asking a question about when I wanted to add something on it about sending me like some font. Um, like I, I wanted to add a year or something like that. So she sent me that and they have a really, really cute, I bought it. It's like a um, something, I don't know if it's a, for your needles, like a needle book maybe. I don't know. They have some really cute patterns. Siren Stitch Works, check them out on, I think they're on Etsy. This one, this was just kind of a random hello start that I um I, I ended up getting this cute chart. It says Pumpkin Stew by Shepherd's Bush. I started this at the Stitch New England retreat. I kitted up at my LNS here, Stitcher's Inc. I'm stitching it on a 20 count linen. Um, so this doesn't look really good. I'm gonna have to redo my long stitches and maybe couch them. I, when it's when it's stretched, it looks better, but there's my start. And the thing is, is it's stitched with pearl cotton. So that's kind of fun and something new and interesting for me. So I'll have to fix those long stitches. Like I said, I don't know if I'm gonna couch them or I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it yet. Probably when I get them out back on a Q-snap, they stretch out better. So I also, when I was ironing it, I kind of pulled one of them. So I might pull out those double X stitches and redo those anyway, but yep, that's where I am on that one. It's fun and it was my first time trying the pearl cotton so that's that's fun the colors are fun and i had to get creative with um billy at my lns stitchers inc help me the buttons are hard to find now you can't really get all of the buttons and so i had to sub some buttons for other buttons and so she helped me pick them all out and we have a really really cute some of these are so cute we have a really we have a bunch of cute buttons picked out it's all going to be okay my substitutions are going to be fine. Just fine. Oh, this next one. Hmm, I started for my birthday, not this year, the year before. Hashtag so fancy B day Sal. My friends Amy, Fiber Arts Amy, and Maggie Kitchy Whip started her with me. This is Queen Anne's Lace by Nora Corbett. She is NC256, copyright from 2019. She's one of the Poison Pixies collection. Okay, so I liked her but now I really like her. She's being stitched on a piece of 32 count opalescent raw. Look at this. She's so sassy. I love her. I love her. So I would like to finish her this year. She lives in a really fun quilted bag by Sweet Annie's um, quilt. She's on Etsy and she has like fun, like Karen water lilies and a whole bunch of like beads and crinus. Yeah, she's gonna be like beautiful and blingy. I'm excited about her. And another mirabilia. This was my start to commemorate the Queen City Stitch Retreat. Um, Queen Mariposa signed, uh, Nora Corbett signed her for me. Isn't she beautiful? I love all those butterflies. I found the most gorgeous piece of fabric to stitch her on. Oh, I love it. It's Melody by Fabrics by Stephanie. And I think I'm going like this. Ooh. She pretty. She's gonna be pretty. I love this fabric. I think it's like perfect. And my sister-in-law, I picked this fabric out. My sister-in-law made me the perfect bag for her. These butterflies on it, like I said, Rivertown Designs US. Ooh, I love it with like a thread bed and everything. She has a lot of pretty DMC. She's a beauty. She is a beauty. All right, Queen Mariposa. Okay, this, <laughs> this is my Chatelaine. My Chatelaine did not get a lot of love last year. Any love? A little bit of love. But Maggie and Amy host um, 
hashtag Chatelaine Wednesdays. And they just started a Zoom. And so I hopped on the Zoom the other night and put some X's in. But this is my Chatelaine. It is called Rainy Day Seasons Autumn. And that's what it looks like. And this is where I am. Ooh, so pretty. There's some fancy dense road stitches in there. I put a little bit of Krynik in there the other night. The colors are popping off of this fabric. This fabric is 30, 28 count Wichelt in chocolate, black chocolate linen. Okay, so this chart, I saw it like mocked up on the, on the Chatelaine website and it was on black and I just don't like to stitch on black. So this is about as close as I got and I love the color. I do not love the Wichelt fabric. It's that stiff see-through, it's not my favorite, but I am sacrificing because I wanted this color. I think it's so pretty. So got a little bit done this year, not a ton, but I hope to get more done this year. Um, or, yeah, I got a little done last year. Now, who was I talking to? I was talking to a lady at a retreat who's finished Chatelaine's. She said the trick is, is to keep it on a, uh, like on your stand, like on a scroll. So you can just work on it. Cause it's, it's such a thing to like get it out and get it going. And it's complicated and there's a lot of instructions to follow step by step. And so it is, it can get a little overwhelming. And so it's not something that you can just hop back into necessarily like just, oh, by the seat of your pants. Well, not for me anyway. I'm not an expert Chatelaine stitcher yet. So they are a little bit complicated. So I would like to try to take her advice, but I need to find a different stand situation for that. Okay, this one I started um, New Year's Eve last year, not 2023, 2022. Um, this is called Raise a Glass of Cheer. It's by Blackbird Designs. I started this with my friend Stacy of Thread the Little Stitchery and our hashtag was Raise a glass to 2023. We both worked on it this past New Year's Eve. So I'm stitching this on a piece of 32 count marble pointer by X2 Designs. Here's where I got. It was so fun to stitch. In fact, I even found myself wanting to stitch on this more this past week because, so this was a fun one because the colors are, they're all fancy floss and they're very similar. And I was kind of skeptical, like, why so many like red paint, weathered barn, old red paint, weathered barn. And then there was the cherry bark, which I used all of that up, but they were all sort of so close. And I'm like, I don't know, but look, look how good it works. Like, look, look at that star right there. I mean, it works. So, you know, sometimes trust your designers, right? So pretty. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed stitching on that one. Uh, I don't know if I can sneak in some more time on that one this month, but I really would like to because it's going really well. This next one is on my Walk of Shame Whip Go. Um, this is by Park Harper Bart, Robin Hood Sampler. I am turning this one into a wedding sampler for my husband and I. I love the movie Robin Hood, the Disney version of Robin Hood. Um, I started this quite some time ago and you can find this on Park Harper Bart's Gumroad. Here's where I am. This is a 32 count stone nougat um, with called for DMC. Doesn't the DMC, it just glows. I wish in person that green, it just glows. So that's where I am. And I'll be working on it some more this year. I love this one. Border mm, takes a little bit of time, but it's a good border, isn't it? Look at it. Nice. Very, very nice. Okay, and we'll see this one. This is another sampler. My samplers got zero attention last year. This is um, Rosina Desiree 1820. Uh, this is a reproduction sampler charted by Arlene Cohen of Works by ABC. And what makes this one extra special is that it was stitched by a, a black girl. And there's just not very many um, samplers stitched by black girls in these times that we have access to or we know of and that people have actually reproduced so it's it's pretty it's rare and this is all i have because it's over one and the middle was started in over one and i'm a chicken when it comes to over one so that's been my hold up on that one so this is on my whip go this year this is stitched on a piece of let's see 32 count linen and it's peanut by be stitch me and um yeah special piece and this piece is so elegant to me like it's simple and the colors are so good and it's such an elegant sampler i really want to stitch it 
Um, on top of it being a special piece, I, I really <laughs> I really like it too. It's really pretty. <laughs> All right. My last one for this pile is another mirror. Oh, I love this one so much. This is Santa's Magic. Um, MD number 15, copyright 1995. This one is out of print. Look at this. Full of Krynik, full of beads, but mostly full of Krynik. Love, love, love him. I am stitching him on a piece of 32 count fiberlicious yummy fibers. I think it's like something treasure. Sorry for the zipper. I always have to look. Hidden treasure. It's a fabric of the month. And let's see. Where am I on this? Well, that's the back, so you don't want to see that. It goes like this. Yes. So I made a little bit of progress this past year, not a ton, not as much as I wanted to, but a little bit. It's coming along. My friend Bernadette of Burn Stitches, she finished this one and brought it to the Queen City Stitch Retreat. So I got to see finished in person. So good. Made me even more, more excited to get this one done. All right, so bear with me here for another minute or two and I'll be pulling down cubby number four. Y'all are doing great. Thanks for hanging in there. Okay, I'm back. Here's the next one. All right, this one is a very recent start for me. Um, started for the Jingle Ball, Santa's Night Tree by Hello from Liz Matthews. I attended Liz's FFO class uh, for Santa's Night Tree to learn how to do her tree finishes at the Jingle Ball this year. It was a great class. She did a fabulous job. I am not through stitching this yet. It was a lot of stitching and I had ornaments and things like that that I was working on for other people. So um, I... Um, Oh, started this is on a piece of 36 count by Atomic Ranch. My friend Zan and I, when we were at Stitch New England, we picked this fabric out. I don't remember the name of it, but that's where I am. So you'll see. I've got a good bit low, oh, a good bit left to do. Sorry for the glare. There we go. But yeah, that that plaid's a lot of work. It looks really good though, but it took a lot of time. So it lives in a really cute bag by my friend Jordan, the tattoo stitcher. She made this. Isn't that sweet? I love that. So I do want to get this one finished fairly soon because I do want to FFO it. I did um, watch the class twice, so I feel like I can do it, but I am a newbie with my sewing machine. So we'll see how it goes. So this next one I started this year as well. It's called Scary Sampler by Heartstring Samplery. I love this one. I'm zooming with some friends and I jumped on the bandwagon of the Scary Sampler stitch along um, started by Jamie Teeny Weenie Stitches. And um, I, I zoom on this one with some friends, um, Bobby Pumpkin Creek Primitives and um, Justine and Jackie from X's and Ho's, Fawn from Sanctum Stitching somebody else on that one with us if I forget I'm so sorry anyway isn't that a cool chart I love it it has lots of like hidden references and stuff in it this is where I am I'm stitching on a piece of 40 count milk chocolate by x2 designs these are supposed to represent like the demigorgons from stranger things um you'll notice I have omitted the scary um green alien heads I don't like green aliens I don't like them at all so I'm not putting that on my piece I don't think you can really tell very much I um also picked up the Vicky Clayton silk pack from Garon Stitchery for this chart so it's really nice really nice silk pack and I'm enjoying stitching on this. So I do think I will get some progress on this over the year just because when we zoom, I'm gonna be stitching on that. Oh, this lives in a super cute Lake House Stitch Co. bag, one of my favorite Halloween bags. Look at that kitten with the wings. So sweet. All right, this next one, I love this one, but it did not get any attention last year. This is Serbian Proverb by La Di Da. Oh, it says, be humble for you are made of earth. Be noble for you are made of stars. I kitted this up with the called for MPI silks. Oh, it is so good. I'm stitching it on a piece of fiber on a whim presenting Lorelai Gilmore. It said I didn't work on it. So this is where I am. Look how pretty that is. It's really pretty. The silks are really pretty, but it's on my whip go this year. So I will be putting some stitches in. This next one is by Autumn Lane Stitchery. I just love this. I don't have that many spring patterns or whips like, you know, I'm not working on them, but this is a Serena Sprout. And I think this is such a cool pattern. I love this big flower. 
I'm stitching her on the called for fabric. I think it's like a 32 count friendship green by fabrics by Stephanie. Oh, it might be 28 count, but it's called for DMC. And there I am. I did work a little bit on her this year. So I did get a little bit of progress, but not a ton, but she's good. She's good. Yeah. And like I said, just one of my fewer springtime stitches. So I really like her for that. This next one is, mm, I think this is on my walk of shame for Whipgo. I'm stitching this for my husband. It's by, it's called Sharks and Minnow, Minnows. It's by Forbidden Fiber Co. Came as a kit with the chart and the needle minder and the fabric and the floss. And my husband really likes to show Yellowstone. Came with a cool Yellowstone project bag. And this is where I am. I think this is a 32 count. It is the kit fabric. What is it? Palomino? Yeah. That's all I have done. <laughs> I have a long way to go, so, but yeah, I am stitching that for him. This next one, I don't have much going on this one either. I started this one. This is Praiseworthy Stitches, um, Simple Gifts, Courage. This was the chart that Pam from Just Keep Stitching um, chose, hashtag Pam Survival Style. This year in June was 30 years since Pam's breast cancer diagnosis. And so she wanted to start a stitch along and this is what she started. I love this one so much. Um, I'm stitching this on a piece of, I think it's like 40 count silver moon. And I'm using a couple Threadworks purples. Purple is kind of the universal color for all cancers. And then in the, for the initials of people that I know um, that have battled certain kinds of loved ones and family that have um, battled certain kind of cancers. I am going to change those colors, but my base colors are just two cool, like Threadworks purples. Let me see if I can show you. Are those the different ones? Yeah. Really nice. Really nice. Lives in a really pretty Matchy matchy, you're on Toten Bags bag. I love this. I think it's a beautiful bag. And I even purchased um, PNB Making Memories on Etsy. They have they have a lot of like just keep stitching stuff, but this is their um, needle minder for this particular sal. So I love that. Very pretty. And it's a Quaker, and I love stitching Quakers. So you want to twist my arm and stitch that. Okay. Sir Thomas, Sir Thomas by Glendon Place. So this year I'm going to be finishing Sir Thomas, which a bunch with a bunch of my friends. Um, Tara, the 805 stitcher asked me, did I want to finish Sir Thomas this year? And I said, yes. So what I did was I chopped him up into 12 pieces and assigned a piece a month. Um, and then I started reaching out to my friends that I knew were stitching Sir Thomas and asked them if they wanted to join me and gave them the basic idea of what we were doing. And then they chopped him up depending upon where they were or what worked for them and I love that and we're gonna zoom and we do a piece every month so let's see where's Sir Thomas Sir Thomas stays on my roller frame um he is stitched on with the called for fabric it is a 28 count Joblin China Moon there we are he's a beauty I know his sparkle doesn't come through but he has so much like sparkly silk lame and petite treasure braid from rainbow gallery ah he's gorgeous he's gonna have beads all the things at the end i love him so much you know like i said he's on a roller frame these scroll rod covers are made by melissa from sheba designs and when i'm not working on him he lives in this very cool like scroll roll rod cover thing made by ronnie over at gear on stitchery yeah He's gorgeous, and I am super excited to be getting him done this year. All right. This next one I wanted to get done last year, but I kind of lost steam on it, and I just got distracted. This is one of my older whips. This is Snowy Christmas Quaker Style by RETM. So fun. This one, I didn't buy enough, like, chalk fancy floss when I first started stitching it and I ran out and when I went to get some more it was very blue and not as white and so I tried like a million different whites and anyway found a little something but ah, note to self buy all the fancy floss at once 
I just didn't know I would need more. But this is a 32 count picture this plus dwarf. And there's where I got this here. So I got some progress in. And um, I do have a good bit left, don't get me wrong, but doable because I love to stitch Quakers. And so I can really work on that enjoyably. So maybe this year will be its year. I am doing, did I even say I'm going to try to do 24 finishes in 2024? I am. I'm trying to do 24 finishes, 24 old whip finishes. I hope I said that. That's one of my major plans. So we'll see. Okay, this one is another Autumn Lane Stitchery. Something Wicked This Way Comes. I love this chart. I love this bridge. This whole, it's it's good. It's good. I'm stitching this on a piece of 32 count Escape by Be Stitch Me. There's what I have. It's very good. Not a ton of progress this year, but I did put a couple hundred stitches into it um, for Stitch Your Spooky Stuff. Cool chart. This one, yeah, I'm stitching this with Colleen Rebel Stitcher Designs. We have a hashtag, Spooky House Sal. This is, I'm gonna put a picture up here, Spooky Halloween by Lakeside Needlecraft. Um, it is charted by Doreen Jones, but Lakeside Needlecrafts in UK, they have the rights to it. So that's where you have to get it from. Here's where we are. I'm stitching this on a piece of, uh, I think it's like a 16 count Witch's Brew by Mystic Fabrics. So zoom in a little bit there. Yeah, I did a color conversion. I changed the green and the yellow and the moon color a little bit. I like it. It's cool. I got a good bit done. I got a good bit done because I was motivated because I thought I would get to see Colleen at um, her sweater weather retreat and I didn't get to go. Um, I wanted to have some done when I saw her. This is my oldest whip. This is a heaven and earth design. It's called a hate. It is a story keep and it is called, oh, it is so thick. It is called um, Home is Where the Magic Is. I'm gonna put a picture up here by Randall's artworks by Randall Spangler. I'm not taking it all the way out of the cue snap, but this is where I am. That's as wide as it'll be. It's thick. I'm doing like, am I doing full crosses with two strands of floss? Yeah, and it's like 25 count. So it's, it's feeling like a little tapestry going on back here. Yeah, but it's pretty. I'm getting good, good resolution on that. I like that. So, um, I didn't stitch on it all last year, but I will be this year. It is on my whip go walk of shame. I have a bunch of paids purchased, but I will, it's the only one I have started because when I first started stitching, I thought I could stitch all of those, but I didn't realize how long they took. I didn't realize how long any of it took. This next one is a focus piece of mine for this year. It's called this, It's called Strawberry Garden by Blackbird Designs. I'm gonna put a picture up here. It is out of print. A sweet, sweet stitchy friend has loaned it their copy to me and other chart to me. And so it is a priority to finish ASAP. I'm stitching this on a 40 count milk and honey by Fiber on a Whim. There we are. I did have a small tragedy and I have had to frog that entire strawberry and now I've got it put back in yep it's got some lazy daisy stitches and some eyelet stitches and I wasn't doing a very good job on my lazy daisies but I was doing something wrong and I figured out what I was doing wrong but the problem is is in order to fix them I'd have to rip all that out so I think it's gonna stay just like you know that's my piece I think it's pretty it's pretty I love this I fell head over heels in love with this chart and it lives in a perfect bag for it by um, Tammy Blaylock, Creative Country Girl. Perfect, I love strawberries. Like, I, I love them. I like to eat them, I like pictures of them, I, li I like them. But as you'll see, here's my next one, Strawberry Summer, whoops, <laughs> by Al Forest Embroidery. I bought this as a kit. Um, uh, this is on my whip though, because I didn't touch this one last year. It's really pretty. I'm stitching it on the kit fabric, which is just a nice neutral. Here's where I am. Didn't put any work in it last year. It is with the really pretty owl, owl forest um, embroidery floss. Yeah, I really like that one. It's pretty. I like the strawberries. This next one is Strelitzia, Bird of Paradise Mandala by Glendon Place. 
Oh, it's charted all in dinky dyes and it is gorgeous. I'm stitching this on the call for fabric, which is a 28 count picture this plus chime. I didn't get a ton done on it this summer, but I did put some stitches in. That's where I am. Beautiful dinky dyes. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm not in any hurry to get this one done. I did want to make it up into the flower with that purpley color. I didn't make it this year, but maybe next year. Oh, this next one is so fun. This is by the Cricut Collection. It is sugar cookies. Ooh, love it. Love it. So I did get some progress on it this year. I'm stitching this on a piece of, hmm, what size is this? 32 count. And it's called Dying for Cross Stitch. And it was a fabric of the month that I've got off somebody's D-stash. It's a really print mint, pretty minty color. This is where I am. So I'm purposefully leaving some areas. <clears throat> blank to add beads and crinic. I definitely want to bling this one up when it's done. So I have a lot of ideas. So I'm leaving blank spaces for things and I'm excited about it. I enjoy stitching on this one. It's fun. This next one has been like a four year situation. So this is the Stars Hollow um, online retreats. And so far we have three charts released, Autumn and Stars Hollow, um, summer in Stars Hollow, spring in Stars Hollow. The next one, winter, comes out in just the next couple months. They, I count this as one whip because they are all stitched together. They all even, they join. So, um, don't have a ton done. This is on a, it's an even weave. I think it's a, I don't know, maybe a 32 count. Here's where I am. So I've got some of autumn done, some of summer done, none of spring done, and then we don't have winter yet. But that's about how long it's going to be. Yep, it's full coverage. Each piece is almost like, I think it's like 95 by 95 or something like that. So it's not a difficult full coverage, like there's not tons of confetti. There is a good bit of block stitching, so it is enjoyable to stitch. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it when I'm done, though. But I'm looking forward to the next retreat. It'll be fun. Be the last one. Okay, this project. It's kind of another one of my experiments. This is my superhero summer afghan. And what I've done is um, Forbidden Fiber Co. Not this, not 20, I think it was 2022 market released these charts. Um, they're all like Marvel superhero themed. And she dyed floss. Um, with these names of these charts and the idea was if you bought the floss which is gorgeous you would get the chart free so what I decided to do is there's 12 of them and I decided I was going to make an afghan out of them yep yep so I bought an afghan off the stony creek website um, one that had like three blocks horizontal and four blocks vertical and then they're all pretty much the same stitch count. So they're all gonna fit pretty much okay. Um, I am on still on the first one. This is my uh, Danvers block. It's my favorite color of uh, floss. Isn't that gorgeous? That's all one color floss. I love it so much. I'm using like this big, huge honking needle. Let me see what size this is. Cause I thought I had them sitting up here for some reason. They were, I found them in the wrong whip bag. Oh, tapestry needle. Let's see. Oh yeah. No, this is a 22. No, these are bigger than that. Never mind. These are way bigger than that. I don't even know where, where did I even get this needle at? I might have ordered it online. Oh, that's a chart. Sorry. But yeah, see, it's like big because these holes, they're really large, but there we are. Yeah. And I've got it in the Q snap because I don't want to take it out because it's this it's it's a lot it's a lot and so I can easily just wrap it back up with this q-snap and you know there's 12 of them and I was just thinking like really Sarah you could do one of these a month they're not even that difficult there are lots of block stitching like you could really get this done this year <laughs> amidst everything else I'm doing but I could and then I could have it made into an afghan I was going to give it to my grandson but I don't even know if he'll like if he'll like the Avengers, if he'll like Marvel. So I might keep it 
and just hold on to it. And then if, if, if either one of my grandsons like it, then maybe gift it on to them. But it lives in this huge crab shack, crab shack stitchery bag that you can find on Etsy. Super great prices, large size bags. That's a big project. Wow. That was it for that bin because I had some big hefty projects in there. So I've got two more cubbies left and we'll be done. Thanks for being so patient. Hold on just a minute. I'll be right back. Oh, all right, y'all, I'm back. Whew. Okay, this is my last like cubby and a half. So here we go. This is a new start this year. The drawn thread is my first drawn thread. It's the autumn garden. I just fell in love with that. I love the colors. All those flowers, so pretty, so pretty. Hashtag the Autumn Garden Sal. Join me if you like. This is the called for fabric. It's called, it's dirty. I think it's a 32 count. Here's where I am. Stitched all with these magnificent silks. I did purchase the silk pack from the Drawn Thread website. I love this. I like that whip. It's fun to stitch, uh, especially once I got that house built. It lives in a really cute bag by Sheba Designs. I really just showed the pattern. <laughs> now I gotta put a sticker over there. Uh, when I do that, I'm so annoyed at myself. Okay, this next one. I started this one with my friend Amy, the Gable Stitcher, and Michelle Cozy Egg. And Amy started this stitch along and she told me she was gonna be stitching this. Um in, when I was at Stitch New England Retreat. And then um I don't know who all started it, but The Birdman Cometh by Little Robin Designs. It is such a fun, funky, quirky little sampler. I love it. I don't have much done on it. I mean, it's over 200 stitches because it's on 40 count fabric, but I just have a little bit of the border. It's a really pretty purple color going. I think it's like the Birdman Sal. That's fun. I would like to work on that some more this year. It lives in a super cute but bag my sister-in-law made me from Rivertown Designs US. I love otters. They're one of my favorite animals. I picked this fabric out on Spoonflower. Love it. Okay, this is one of my favorite whips. And I want to finish her this year. I wanted to finish her last year. This is The Forest Goddess by Mirabilia. She is MD something something. Let's see, 87 from 2005. This chart was gifted to me by my friend Lisa, Cross by Floss. God love her. It was when I first started stitching mirrors and I missed out on this, like on a D-stash or something. And I told her I was boned about it, but mainly because I thought it was out of print, but it wasn't out of print. But she borrowed it to me at StitchCon and gave it to me. And oh, I love this one so much. So I'm stitching this with Lisa, Cross by Floss and Amy, Fiber Arts Amy. We got to stitch together in person on her um, at the Steel City Stitchers Retreat this past year and at, we worked on a little bit at Queen City. There she is. She stitched on a piece of 32 count Cecil by Seraphin Linens. She's so gorgeous. I want to finish her badly this year. Badly, badly. I love her. Yep, 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 yep. So I know I'm finishing Touching the Autumn Sky. You haven't met Touching the Autumn Sky yet, but this will be my next one after I finish that one. Um, so I would hope that would be at least two mirrors finished this year. Maybe I can shoot for three. We'll see. I love this bag. This is a Garon Stitchery bag, but look at this. this is a Tula Pink too, and look at the bears in there and the bees. I thought this was perfect for the forest goddess. Just like couldn't ask for a better fabric. I love this one of my favorite bags too. All right, this next one is another Mirabilia. This one was gifted to me for my birthday last year, not last year, the year before, by my friend Bernadette of Burn Stitches. This is the Garden Party. Uh huh. MD one forty. I fell in love with this chart after I saw Rika House of Stitch and Stash. I saw her um, finish stitch of this at StitchCon and uh, those lanterns just glowed. It was just the most gorgeous piece. Um, I love this. So I'm stitching this with my friend Bernadette. And Bernadette's actually, this is supposed to be her and I at the garden party because we're friends. And Bernadette's actually going to do a skin conversion on one of the ladies to make her look more like her. And so um, I think whenever she gets her skin conversion done, then I'm going to use it too in mine because this will represent Bernadette and I. I love it so much. So this is on a piece of 28 count Twilight 
buy a picture of this plus and I just so I'm afraid my fabric's too dark and I'm seriously contemplating starting it over I don't know yet haven't decided. I did stitch on this a little bit at the Queen City Stitch Retreat with Bernadette, so that was special. I am not sure stuff's gonna show that great on there. I don't know. Mixed, mixed thoughts about that one. I haven't fully decided on that yet. This next one I started this past summer, the Steel City Stitchers, they did like a hashtag, Steel City Stitchers Mermaid Salon. I would have been really wanting an excuse to start this one. This is the Mermaid of Salem Bay by the Primitive Hair. Oh, I love this. I got this at market a couple years ago and I got it all kitted up with like the little beads and everything. It's gorgeous. And I knew I was going to Salem. And so I did stitch on this while I was there and I did see Salem Bay. And so I stitched this on a piece of 30 count Pirates fabric that is by the Primitive Hair. That's my start. Oh, it's so good. So good. I love this. Probably been saying that about everyone. <laughs> hey, if they made it through my UFO situation, then I do love them. This next one I started with my friends from the Full Moon Stitchers that I stitch with. The Moons of 2022 by Kathy Barrick. Um, and also Leanne Stitches. She's stitching this one too. Uh, when I stitch this, I am not going to do Moons of 2022. I'm just going to do the Moons. This is gorgeous. I, it is on my Whip Go Walk of Shame for this month. So I will be stitching on it this month. This is stitched on a piece of 36 count flannel flower by Fox and Rabbit. One of my favorite Fox and Rabbit fabrics. It's beautiful. The fabric kind of steals the show on this one. Yep, I'm doing a bunch of filling. This is beautiful. Beautiful. I think, I'm sure it was charted in NPI because I think Kathy Barrick she charts most I think she charts everything in NPI mostly but if there's a DMC conversion that's what I'm doing oh this one okay so I bought this one for my friend Bernadette for her birthday last year um it was on her wish list and I've always loved it too so this is the palace by Letty Stitch and we started this one together I first saw this one initially as a diamond painting, but I'm so glad I found it as a cross stitch. Um, I have been to London and I loved it. I loved England in general. So um, Bernadette's been too, so it's kind of fun. And I also love rain and to look at the mist around Big Ben and it's just so good. So I didn't take this one off the Q-snap because I haven't stitched my little X at the top of my fabric yet. I didn't want to mess myself up. So um, this is my start. And I love this needle minder. This is from my friend Carrie of Three Trail Stitchers. When she went to the UK Pavilion at Epcot one year, she made me a needle minder out of one of the pins there. So I love that on there. It's pretty. The kit's really, really nice. You know, the kits come with all these, this floss. And this bag, I asked my sister-in-law from Rivertown Designs US to make Bernadette and I matching project bags. So that's our matching project bags for the palace. By Letty Stitch, really, really pretty kit. It is full coverage. <laughs> All right, this next one I'm stitching with Jessica, Stitches of Stat, Stitches of Sass. This is the Stitch Witch by Tiny Modernist. This is so cute. Uh, my friend Zian, Crazy Band Lady Stitches, she's stitching this one too. And so I'm stitching this one, I think this is on like a Starge Hollow Blend by Fiber on a Whim. This is where I've gotten, but I've messed up, so I need to frog. Um, I put a bunch of stitches in this side, and there's not enough space for this little skull here to have a... I'm probably off a stitch somewhere, so I, I need to figure out what I did wrong and go back and frog that out and restitch. but yeah, really cute stitch. I love this one. It's in a fun gear on tote bags, too. <laughs> Random piece of thread. Oh my goodness, this next one is a fairly recent start that I'm very excited about. This is The Woodland Fairy by Mirabilia. I'm stitching her with um, Samantha, the Huga Stitcher, and Amber, Rogue Mama Stitcher. We started her just the end of November. Um, she's The Woodland Fairy, MD67. She was just recently out of print in the last couple months. And let's see, I don't know her. 2002 was her copyright. She's a unique Mirabilia. Um, these wings, these moth-like wings are just awesome. I am so excited to be stitching her with these girls. 
I'm trying to convince my friend Jordan, the tattooed stitcher, and Burn to Dead Burn Stitches to get working on her too. Look at this fabric. This is Kaleidoscope by Fabrics by Stephanie. I started in the middle with a blend, of course. This fabric is so good. I am like over the moon excited about it. And I also asked my sister-in-law to make me a special project bag for this one too, because it's Woodland Fairy-ish, right? Yeah, this one's good. She put a little handle on this one for me. It's got, it's full of beads and Krynik and DMC. Oh, this one. And I'll be stitching on that one throughout the year because we're zooming. This one is Things I Know for Certain by M. Kissa Creations. This is a, I don't know even what it's called, like a saying from one of my favorite movies, Practical Magic. I love this so much. Um, I am stitching this. I, she has it charted in different colors, but I'm stitching it all in one color. It's on a piece of 32 count Melissias by Under the Sea Fabrics. I'm stitching this with a glory on it. It's called something thistle. This little purple, I think, and it's got like browns in it. It's really pretty. Um, so what I was thinking about this one is um, these witches and the umbrellas are pretty significant, but I really want to finish this one this year. So what I might do is I might do all that outlining and take this one to StitchCon with me. That's kind of what I got in my mind. That way I could be kind of mindless and just stitch, stitch, stitch. Yeah, this lives in a really cute project bag. I love this. This is by the 805 Stitcher Tara. I love this fabric. I've since gotten a few more uh, project bags with that same fabric, but it's 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 gorgeous fabric. So I made a little progress on that this year, but not a ton. This next one's on my Whip Go Walk of Shame. I'm just telling you, I did not. I'm I'm not a super sampler person. I like the ones I like, and I do like them. Um, but I could tell I'm not just because I didn't stitch on any of them this past year. This is Thursa Priscilla Dolls by my friend Julie of Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. Her her company is Hemlock and Rye Stitchery, and she recharted this from a reproduction. And here we are, this is what I have. I'm stitching this on a piece of 32 count Duxbury by Fox and Rabbit Linen. Um, I There were some zooms about this sampler, and I did show this to Brendan. And um, my fabric is kind of darker than a lot of the other Duxberries that I've seen. And he said that's because he dyed it when it was cold outside. So that's kind of a cool thing. I chose this because um, there was two ways you could stitch this chart of Julie's. Um, she took the colors from the back that weren't faded from the sun and they're very vibrant and bright colors. And then of course the front is much more muted and I chose the vibrant back colors. And then I chose this Duxbury because it reminds me kind of more of like a paper bag brown. And I don't know if you've ever seen like the Latin American paintings on like the paper bag is looking like fiber with the bright colors on it. I love that. So I was kind of that same kind of look. So I love it. I think it's looking great. Looking great. And the, um, I found an appropriate gear on Toten bags for it. Uh, it's It's got Australian animals on it for like the fox and rabbit fabric. So I love that. Well, this is the first sampler I think I ever bought. This is a Hands Across the Sea samplers. It's Tom's Jewelry. This is, oh, I love this one so much. It's so colorful and so funky. And so I just, I love it so much. So I started this on a piece of 36 count Fox and Rabbit ballet slippers. That's where I am. So this, I started this before I made friends with the 36 count fabric or the 40 count. I went back and forth. I stitched it with one thread. Then I pulled it out and I stitched it with two and it was too bulky. Then I went back to one thread. And now, now that I'm friends with 36 count, I think I can make some good progress on that one. All right, this is one of my main focus pieces for the year. This is a Touching the Autumn Sky by Mirabilia. This is loaned to me by a sweet stitchy friend. I would like to finish this one by June when I go to StitchCon. She is MD, I think she's 33. Yeah, um, copyright 1997. She's a very sought after Mirabilia and she's just so pretty. Reminds me of my daughter. So not a lot of beads on this one, lots of DMC. I'm stitching her on a piece of 32 count Snowdrift by Fabrics by Stephanie. This Snowdrift fabric, um, I love this for like the sky. I just think it looks just like the sky. That's where I am. This is going to be my Mira Monday piece until it's done. So, I know I'm going to have to put in more than Mondays on it, but you're going to be seeing it every Monday. 
All right, this is my another one of my huge focus pieces for the year. Like, whew, I got a lot of work to do on this one, y'all. This is going to be my stockings on Sunday. It's going to be all the things. This is Toys and Games Stocking. Um, it's in this Better Homes and Gardens book. This is a stocking that my daughter picked out for me to do for her son. I offered it. Wish I would have offered others first because she loves this, but it is a lot of work. It's been really hard for me. Um, in fact, I just bought like a hundred needles and Peco organizers, and I'm gonna rethread all my needles so I can make faster progress on it. I'm stitching this on a mushroom lagana. I think it's a 28 count. Huge piece of fabric. Let me get you in here so you can see what I'm dealing with. I made some progress this year, but not enough, trust me. There we are, lots of fractionals, lots of color changes. Yeah, lots to go. So, like I said, I'm setting myself up for success. I'm threading my needles. I'm gonna get busy on this one. This is, so this one along with the two borrowed charts I have are my three number one priorities for the year. Three number ones got it three number ones and then my anniversary stitch but the three number ones so you gotta get working on that oh this one right here is so cute i'm stitching this with my friend um bernadette from burn stitches and jordan tattooed stitcher we're stitching tree bear by soda stitch this is hashtag tree bear sal and then i use this for the hashtag because i started it a while back um hashtag soda stitch saturday so I love this. I stole, this is my piece of fabric that went with Christmas mousse originally. And here's where I am. It's so bright and colorful. And when I get that back stitching in, it's going to be amazing. I have not made tons of progress on it this year, but I have worked on it some. Oh, the grains are so good. It's so stinking cute. I don't know what's going to happen with my soda stitch Saturday since I have to do my whip goes on Saturday. Unless I give myself like an hour or two to start the day, maybe with Soda Stitch Saturday and then move on to Whip Go. I don't know. This one is a very special piece to me. This is Uncle Sam by Kathy Barrick. So we go to the beach every Memorial Day weekend. And I started stitching on this there at the beach a couple years ago. And so now I only stitch on it on that beach trip every year. So when I take it out and iron it, it smells just like suntan oil. And it's not suntan oil, so sorry. Sunscreen. Skin cancer is not good. Sunscreen and um, the ocean. Mm. So I love it. I think it's on the Stars Hollow Blend. It's a 32 count. I did finish, did get that moon done this year or a lot of it done. Um, that's where I am. I am doing called for DMC with the exception of the blue. I chose a Forbidden Fiber Co. Royal Blue because it is a gorgeous blue. And that's where I am. I made some good progress this, this time. Yep. And so it'll come out again when I go back to the beach next year. Well, hopefully we'll go to the beach next year. I don't know. My daughter's having a baby, so <laughs> we'll have to see how that goes. This next one is on my Whipco board because it did not have any progress. Um, it is Wallace and Gromit, a family portrait. I'll put a picture up. Um, let's see. This was found in the 2021 April World of Cross Stitch magazine, and the artist is Fiona Baker. And like I said, no progress is on a Lugana because it's all full coverage and there's where we are. But you will see some progress this year because it's gonna be on my whip go. All right. This is another Halloween piece. Love this one too. This is Witch Witch by La Di Da. I love that huge skirt. Yep. I am stitching this one on a piece of Havana. I don't know what count it is probably 32 count and i'm using an antique black silk called floramel it's made by gloriana there's where i am got a little bit of progress done this year not a ton but this is going to be beautiful when it's done this piece is an experiment i'm not quite sure how i feel about it anymore um, this is Yield Noel by Heartstring Samplery, and when Beth Twist, she designed this based on a reproduction, and she talked about how, you know, to get closer to the reproduction, you could do it on a bigger count fabric with, like, bigger fibers, and so that's what I did. I'm doing this, I think it's like a, 
think it's like a 10 count Betsy Ross and I'm using some um, like needlepoint silks basically um, that work in the clearance at my work at not at my work <laughs> on the clearance at, at Stitcher's Inc. And um, I did a conversion from the fancy floss to the silk and this is where I am. And right now I'm just leaving all that negative space, but I don't know at the end of the day how that's all going to work out. But that's where I am. I'm not even sure I'm going to have enough floss for everything. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is like an experimental piece. I don't know if I'm going to have enough floss. I don't know if I'm going to leave that negative space. I don't know what I'm doing, but I like it. Fun times. All right. And last but not least, this is Yo Ho 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 Sal um, by um, Sue Hillis. Uh, I started this stitch along with my friend Sam, Sammy Liz, and um, Jenny and Nancy of the Bougie Stitchers. And Sam and I were at StitchCon um, in 2022 and we found this at Keepsakes and we picked this up and we said we're going to start this. So I'm stitching this on a piece of 32 count Forbidden Fiber Co. Toasted Coconut. Here's where I am. Uh, I miscounted in that beard somewhere, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to fudge it or I'm going to have to frog it. We're just going to have to see, but that's where I am. Not a ton of progress this year, but a little bit. It's not a huge piece, but I don't know why I've been dragging my heels on it. I love that. I got this bag at StitchCon that year, too. It's a Tammy Blaylock for, um, Creative Country Girl. Y'all, that is all of my whips. So... Wow, so that should have been 93 if I counted right. Oh, sorry, I'm tired. Thanks for sticking with me through all this. Um, like I said, if you have any questions about my plans for 2024, I did do a whole planning video, which I super enjoyed making, and I super am enjoying watching right now the planning videos. Um, I appreciate you hanging out with me, checking out all my whips. If you have any questions about anything, if you have any questions about, you know, my conversions or any questions about any of my whips, feel free to just shoot me a message on Instagram or leave it down in the comment section. Um, I'm excited about this year. <sighs> I really feel like I tread, I'm treading water though with last year where my numbers ended up, where I'm starting the year of 2024 with 93 whips. And I was like, I only had a few more than that last year. And I finished a lot of things. I mean, let's see. I finished 41 things. So if I would have finished 41 things, and not started all of the things that I started, I mean, I would have been down a huge chunk of my whips. And I think I would have had room for them. So, like, how few of things does that make me want to start this year? Right now, it makes me want to start, like, only exactly what I have to. Like, my grandson's baby sampler and, like, ornaments for people. Like, really, that makes me just want to be, like, all of those whips that I pulled... Are, that are kitted that I'm like, oh, I want to start this. Oh, I want to start this. This whole like counting my stats out today and I don't know that this will stick really made me go, okay, like, do you really want to? And of course I cannot finish. I know I will not finish 41 old whips. And I'm telling you that because my old, there's not enough smallish or medium sizes for me to get 41 done. The reason why I got 41 done last year is because I did have things like ornaments and scissor fobs and things like that, smalls that I did for exchanges and stuff. So that's part of the reason why I had so many finishes. I think I can do 24. I need to sit down and get realistic about which 24 it's going to be, but I think I can do 24. But if I keep starting 40 something, I mean, I'm just going to, yeah, I'm not going to make the progress that I want to. So I have to think about that, but at the same same time, it's stitching and it's fun and it makes me happy. And so at the end of the day, I'm gonna do what's gonna make me happy. But I do feel like right now, working my whips down will make me happy. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you've had a wonderful start to your new year. I hope you've been enjoying watching all of the whip parades and planning videos on floss tube. I know I've been thoroughly enjoying them. I'm looking forward to a year full of finishes and zooms with a couple retreats thrown in and a new grandson and you name it. So, um, like I said, happy 2024. Thank you for sticking through my whip parade. I appreciate all of you all 
the watches, the likes, the comments, the subscribes, all of it. You are all amazing. You help make our community such a special place. Thank you to all of my stitchy friends for enriching my entire year in life this past year. So thank you. Love y'all. Y'all are amazing. Um, yeah. So I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day or night, whichever it may be. Enjoy your stitching. Take care and I will see you soon. Thanks.